Oaklo, everybody's favorite Silicon Valley nuclear startup, has announced a new fuel recycling facility in Tennessee. And I think that this, not their reactors, is what is ultimately going to be their legacy. So let's talk about it. Oklo has announced a fuel recycling facility as a first phase up of up to $1.68 billion for an advanced fuel center in Tennessee. This would be the nation's first privately funded facility to recycle used nuclear fuel. And the key here is privately funded. There was a previous Department of Energy facility called the West Valley Demonstration Project in New York, which was shut down in 1972. And that did process about 640 metric tons of spent fuel. So while Oklo is not the first to try to do reprocessing in the United States, they are the first to privately try and do it. The idea is to design, build, and operate a fuel recycling facility in Tennessee, investment totaling up to $1.68 billion and more than 800 jobs. This initial investment will be used for the construction of a facility to recycle used nuclear fuel to fuel in fast reactors like Oklahoma's Aurora powerhouse. The goal is to then take spent fuel from nuclear reactors that already exist in the United States and reprocess it into usable fuel for fast reactors like Aurora's design. On the website, they have a nice explainer video. Oklo is deploying advanced fission powerhouses with the goal of providing clean, reliable, and affordable energy at scale. Existing nuclear plants already generate large amounts of clean electricity, but they only utilize about 5% of the energy in their fuel. And in their animation here, they show that the spent fuel is kept inside of these spent fuel casks, which is normally stored next to the site. But they only utilize about 5% of the energy in their fuel. The remaining 95% can be unlocked through recycling. So that remaining 95 or 94% here is mostly going to be uranium-238, which can't really be used in a typical light water reactor that we have. Recycling. Fuel recycling technology has been developed and refined over the last several decades, and Oklo is planning to deploy a commercial scale fuel recycling facility in the U.S. by the early 2030s. To recycle used fuel, the fuel is first transported from existing storage sites to an Oklo recycling facility. Then it is disassembled and put into a salt bath. So disassembling nuclear fuel assemblies that already exist and have been in a nuclear reactor is actually quite a complicated thing to do because all of the different types of fuel, the shapes are different and the geometries are different. So a lot of the work either has to be done by hand through hot cells or through contaminated equipment. So it's a highly radioactive activity. Not impossible, but it can be done. And countries like France and Russia do routinely do that kind of thing. But the U.S. hasn't had a lot of experience, at least on a commercial scale, of doing it. An electric current separates the uranium and the transuranic material from the unusable fission products. Again, this is a marketing video, so this is really simplifying the process here. And there are a few different methods for how you can separate these two out. What Oklo is proposing here is an electrochemical type of separation called pyroprocessing. And although they're showing it here with a simple salt bath with one electrode and a cathode, the actual pyroprocessing technique is much more complicated. With the spent fuel coming in, you then have an initial salt separation going through an electro-refiner process with transuranic recovery through a cathode processor and eventually going through the casting for fuel fabrication. But in between that, you also have the salt recycling because that needs to be kept clean. You're separating out the wastes and you still have a lot of the cladding material that has to be separated out as well. Because as the fuel operates within a reactor, the cladding material, which is usually zirconium and the UO2 uranium that's inside of the cladding tend to bond together and it's very difficult to actually separate them. So you need an additional chemical process to separate that out. But what Oklo is proposing is essentially this process here with the electro refiner that runs within a high temperature lithium chloride, potassium chloride salt bath. But one of the reasons they're doing this over the more traditional Purex approach is that the uranium and the plutonium actually tends to be a little bit more combined. And from a proliferation standpoint where you don't separate out pure plutonium, it tends to be a bit better. I'll leave a link to this presentation in the description if you want to see more. The transuranic material from the unusable fission products. The fission products are collected from the salt and cast into a solid waste for safe storage. And ceramic glass storage of the nuclear waste has also been explored a lot. So again, they're taking advantage of some work that has been done before. Most of these processes were actually pioneered at Idaho National Laboratory as part of the EBR2 project, which is where the founders of Oklo actually got their inspiration for their Aurora reactor design. Directly attached to the EBR2 reactor at Idaho National Labs is the fuel reprocessing facility. So the idea was that the fuel would come out of the EBR2 reactor, be reprocessed, and then be able to be cycled back in. So Oklo is attempting to essentially do the same thing, but on a commercial scale. The uranium and transuranic material is collected and remanufactured into new fuel assemblies for use. 
And here, remanufacturing fuel from reprocessed material isn't exactly new. This is something that, again, is already done in France and Russia, but most of that fuel is actually going to be reused in light water reactors. So here, Oklo is proposing that they would reuse it in their own fast reactor, which means it's going to be a mix mostly of uranium-238 and plutonium-239, which really is suitable for a fast reactor like their design. In Oklo's Aurora powerhouses, what was once nuclear waste will now transform how we generate clean, reliable, and affordable energy. So what Oklo is doing is really taking a complementary angle in the supply chain to help support their own reactor as well as potentially others. And this is why I think that this angle of fuel recycling is going to be Oklo's legacy. Their CEO, Jacob DeWitt, says fuel is the most important factor in bringing advanced nuclear energy to the market. And this importantly means not just their own reactors. There's a general shortage of HALU fuel within the United States, the type of fuel that a lot of these new designs are going to be using. And by setting up a production facility that could produce that kind of fuel, Oklo is positioning themselves to be there for the long term and to be reactor agnostic. And I think that this is the business line that Oklo is going to have their most success in. If we go back not even five years ago, Oklo's reactor, the Aurora, which was still under initial review by the NRC, had an output capacity of only one and a half megawatts. And quite frankly, outside of a few very specialized applications, that's not going to be enough, especially now that we're talking about data centers that need near 200 or more megawatts. So in response to this, Oklo has increased the output of their reactor, now up to 75 megawatts, which is a pretty big jump from what they started at. And a lot of their initial positioning was about the fact that their reactor was so low power that there was nothing to worry about. But now at 75 megawatts, that's not really going to be the case. As the power level creeps up, it becomes more like a traditional small modular reactor. Oklo also claims to have a customer pipeline of 14 gigawatts, one of the largest. However, if we actually look at those deals, three of them are non-binding letters of intent, which are just promises between companies that if this works out, we'll try and sign a contract. And their largest contract is with a company called Switch for 12 of their 14 gigawatts. And again, it's a non-binding master power agreement to deliver power by 2044. So it's not exactly right around the corner. So although Oklo has technically booked 14 gigawatts of non-binding agreements, we'd still prefer to see some actual binding PPAs or construction agreements in place, like we have with some of the other reactor designers. The other thing that gives me a bit of caution are some of the statements Oklo has made surrounding their licensing approach. Here they talk about how other designers are using Part 52, with the design certification taking 42 months and construction and operation taking 24 to 36 months, and other developers that are taking Part 50 with construction permit and operating license. But Oklo, because they're so much cleverer than everyone else, is going to take a different approach where they're going to go for a combined operating license, the same as under Part 52, and do it in only 24 to 36 months. Which they say is a custom combined operating license application that includes all aspects of design, construction, operation, and would significantly reduce overall review time. But what they're actually doing is just taking this part of Part 52 and putting it over here, and skipping the design certification. Which, yeah, would save some time, but the purpose of doing the design certification is to make the construction and operation application easier to go through. So we'll have to see how well this 24 to 36 months on their accelerated path actually works out. But I bring this up not to cause doubts in Oklo's Aurora power plant timeline, but to point out that their fuel reprocessing facility is going to be on a completely different schedule and license, and serve a completely different market. Because licensing, building, and operating a fuel recycling facility, especially one that produces metal fuel for advanced reactors, is going to give Oklo an enormous advantage over other designers and competitors. Fuel is the lifeblood of all these reactors, and if Oklo controls the keys to that, or at least has a significant portion of the market, then that is something with a very durable moat. Right now we see customer demand that's very strong in data centers. But to be honest, those data centers don't really care whose badge is on the outside of the reactor that's powering them. If it's Oklo, Radiant, Westinghouse, or anybody else, it doesn't matter. All those data centers want is electricity that is reliable. All of those reactors are going to need fuel. And that's where Oklo can take advantage of their facility and use that as market position for the rest of these reactors. If it's their own reactors, I'm sure they're very happy with that. But if Oklo captures only 10% of their market with their own reactor, and the other 90% is someone else, then being able to sell fuel to those other 90% as well is an enormous advantage. So if Oklo can get this facility up and running by the early 2030s like they want to, then I think they'll be one of the best positioned nuclear startups in the industry. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please do consider like and subscribe. It does help out the channel enormously. And thanks for watching.